Howdy gamers, old gamer guy here. Welcome to another Age of Wonders Planetfall video. We are working our way through the tutorial. This is part two. At the end of part one, we just barely got into uh, the combat stuff. I haven't actually fought anything yet, uh, but here we are at the beginning of a battle. It says the defending army always gets to act first, followed by the attackers. Tactical operations can be launched during combat as support, although they are disabled during the first turn. During a combat turn, each unit has three action points to spend on using their abilities, which can cost between one and three action points. Regardless of cost, using an ability always ends the unit's turn. So this is another thing that's fairly uh, common in, in these types of games. You have a certain number of action points. They're used up by actually doing things or by moving. So if you move too far, you won't be able to perform an action. Uh, pretty standard. Each unit has active abilities that they can use during combat. Next to attacks, they have a guard ability, which increases the unit's defenses until the start of their next turn. Guard abilities always cost one action point. So, again, pretty standard guard ability, uh, things like overwatch, stuff like that. Try moving your units forward to form a gun line, Commander. There are several nearby obstacles that your vanguard troopers can take cover behind, symbolized by a shield icon when hovering over the hex in cover. Okay. So I can rotate with the right analog stick. I can zoom in and out with the right analog stick and then I can move the cursor with the left stick. Um, they automatically are starting me off focusing on this sort of motorcycle looking thing. But if I tap R2, I can go between Commanders the and heroes are some of the strongest units in any army capable of wielding a variety of powerful weapons and even piloting vehicles. They level up as they gain experience, allowing them to unlock new abilities and buffs. So that was that's the commander character that I highlighted there. That's what triggered that little uh, voiceover. But um, yeah, in the tutorial, you get assigned a commander. You can make a custom commander, which is what I showed in my uh, first video for this game. And um, but I think throughout the tutorial and throughout the campaign, I believe you play as just preset commanders. But like I was saying, you can tap R2 to switch between troops. So I'm gonna move this guy, well, let's see, let's move them up, this, up to here. And I think the light blue means you're spending one point this darker blue or purple that means you're spending two points and then if I move him all the way up here that that spins all three of his action points so I'm gonna move him up here a friendly unit has moved into cover cover protects the units by making it harder for enemies to hit them with abilities cover is directional and only protects against attacks if it is between the targeted unit and the enemy so once again, fairly common for this type of game, different amounts of cover. So now that that unit is up there, I'm using the digital pad to go left and right on this screen down here. And I'm gonna put them into Overwatch. Some units with ranged attacks can enter Overwatch. While in Overwatch mode, the unit will have a red eye icon above its head. This unit will fire its primary ranged attack at any enemy unit that moves or uses an ability on a hex within this unit's field of view. Okay, so now you can set the area that they're overwatching. So this seems like a good area. Uh, we'll go ahead and move these guys maybe up here it's probably not aggressive enough but I'll, I'll put them in overwatch as well and have them watch like that and put these guys up here and overwatch like that uh, 
go ahead and move the commander up. Put him there. Have him overwatch. This won't be much of a uh, this won't be much of a movement here, but I'll go ahead and do this. I play very cautiously. Yeah, see their their vision is obscured by this this uh, tower thing here. So maybe I should move them a little farther. Hmm. I can move them up like this, but then they won't be in cover. I'll go ahead and do it. Just for the sake of a little bit more overwatch action. And then I'll move my little motorcycle thing over to the side here because then they can come in and uh, flank an enemy. And then they technically have another point to spend, but if I, I can either use the d-pad and go to this check mark or if I just hit down on the d-pad it automatically does that so now I've used up all my points for the round and I can hold R2 to end the turn mm. they're being cautious as well look at that so I'm gonna move let's see I'm going to move these guys up like this. Once again, go for some overwatch action. Can't watch over that way, so I'll do like that. Um, maybe I'll move these guys up. Do the same thing. And maybe I should, well, let's see. I'll put uh, these guys in, up in cover a little bit. Resume their overwatch. And then I'm just going to, I'm going to uh, skip the rest of this turn by uh, hitting down on the D-pad for each unit here. And this will use up the rest of their turns, the rest of their points. And then I will hold R2 to end the turn. Most abilities that are used on enemy units have an accuracy rating, which is the chance that the ability hits the intended target. Okay, and it says you can also graze things, meaning that you hit them, but with reduced strength. Hmm. What's going on there? A unit has been staggered, causing it to lose an action point. Most melee attacks and explosives will stagger units. Ouch. Okay, let's see. So, I think it's going to explain this anyway, but that little red sword icon that's next to there, next to the yellow skull there, you see there's a red sword looking thing. That means that they have melee attacks, and if you move within their uh, range, they're going to take a swipe at you. It's like Overwatch with the guns, except it's with melee. Uh, so what I'm going to do is use my bike thing. I don't know if I'll be able to, let's see. Yeah, surely I can hit them from there. And then I'll use a focused laser array on, on that guy. It's only a 55% chance to hit though. Oh, he missed. Way to go. 
Let's see. Okay, they're already hurt by acid, but I'm going to have them shoot at this thing. And it looks like they have a 75% chance to hit them. A unit attacked from the sides or back is considered flanked and takes increased damage. Units in guard mode cannot be flanked. Okay. There enemy eliminated. Okay, one enemy eliminated. I'll just have whoa, I'll just have them shoot. Oh yeah, okay, pressing X on top of this unit here gives you a little more detail about the unit you can also mod these guys uh, we'll see a little bit more of that later on I think in the tutorial okay so we hit them some Enemy neutralized. Oh yeah. The They've never stood a chance. The commander killed the last unit. So this is pretty cool. Uh, you can press X to be done with the battle or you can hit square and watch the replay. And it, of course, removes all of the uh, hesitation <laughs> between making moves, so it's all just fluid. Got some little graphical glitches there. I've noticed a few of those so far. I'm not sure if that was a glitch or not, because it seems like that should have set off the overwatch for those other characters. That might have been a glitch. <laughs> Enemy eliminated. Enemy down. Our forces are victorious. Pretty cool. I like that feature. But anyway, um, this video, I think, has gone on long enough. This is part two of the tutorial, and we will pick it up right here at the beginning of the next video. So thanks for watching.